Welcome back. Now, as some of you may know, I have a 512 gig model Steam Deck, and also I've fitted a one terabyte SanDisk Ultra micro SD card. So that's totally enough space, right? Wrong. To be honest, it probably is more than enough for normal gaming. But I do a lot of game testing, installing, removing, reinstalling, and this takes a lot of time. And a lot of that time is just downloading all the time with my Steam Deck switched on. So what are the options? Well, there's option one. The easiest option is just to crack open the Steam Deck and stick in a bigger M2 2230 drive. That's the best option, yeah? Well, probably. But to upgrade from a 512 gig to a one terabyte will cost me about 160 pounds. That's $190 in the UK. And two terabytes, well, that's going to cost me 350 pounds, or more like 420 dollars. So what's option two? I could buy a second micro SD card. I could pick one up for around about 100 pounds. That's 120 dollars for a one terabyte. A good option. But I don't like ejecting micro SD cards too often. I find that the springs inside the mechanism just feels a bit too weak for me, and I'm just worried that I'll, I'll break one at some point, and then that's that socket ruined. And also. Dropping and losing something as small as a micro SD is a real issue. You know, it's far too easy to do. But it would allow me to hold off my game test games quite easily. So option three. I could use the new feature in Steam that lets you download games directly to your main PC. And then this is an option that I'm going to look at. But unfortunately, my main PC is also a bit low in space at the moment. So the games I test are not installed in there either. Are there any other options? Yes. This is why you're here listening to my justification for not doing the sensible thing and doing this thing instead. So, option four, buy a two terabyte portable SSD. In this case, I've gone for a SanDisk two terabyte, which I picked up for what I felt was a reasonable £125. It's about $150. It was a bit of a purchase and a whim. I just spotted it on Amazon and thought, I'm going to have one of them. Now, there are better options. In fact, I've got mine a rather nice looking and even smaller, crucial, four terabyte external SSD but that might be in a later video. So, right back to option four. Should be easy. Plug and play. Nope. First off, the drive arrives pre-format, as you'd expect, in XFAT format. So you'll need to make it compatible for the deck first. Now, it is kind of compatible for the deck. If you boot into desktop mode, it will recognize an XFAT drive, but you won't be able to play any games from it. You could copy stuff off it, but that's not what I want to do. So you'll need to make it compatible for the deck. So here's what you could do. This is probably the recommended option is format the drive in EXT4 format, download the games whilst it's mounted on your Steam Deck and they'll automatically add to your Steam library and you can play them straight away. But then that won't work on your home PCs and you'd have to keep your deck switched on for hours at a time downloading those titles, which is what I was trying to avoid. Now there are ways around the EXT4 format not being recognised on Windows you can use free tools or you can purchase tools, but ultimately you need to remember to do that on every PC that you then subsequently plug that SSD into, and that's a pain. So, what's the easiest option? Or should I say the laziest option? Well, if like me, you've done Google searches or watched videos, the only simple option is the NTFS format of the SSD. You can then use it easily in Windows and you can use it in your deck. Generally speaking though, only in desktop mode not in games mode. For many, this may be an issue. For me, it was less of an issue. I was quite happy to look at that route. I wanted to quickly move games from my deck and not just delete them. So with this method, I could fire up the deck in a desktop mode, connect the drive, mount it in Steam and quickly drag and drop my games backwards and forwards to the NVMe or to the SD card or back onto the solid state drive. That seemed like a good option, so I started investigating that. Now, I didn't expect it to be super fast, but it's faster than downloading the game, testing it, removing it, and then re-downloading it. And now, I have a portable library that you can quickly mount to any PC, game from, and copy from, to any PC in my house. This should be extremely handy when it comes to testing games like ARK Survival, or Forza Horizon 5, both games of which are about 125 gigabytes in download. And it means I can actually do some quick comparisons between the Steam Deck, 1X Player, and Win600 without having to download the game three times. Now that's a lot of downloading I've managed to avoid. Finally, there's actually a twist. So, there is a script by SCAWP Scott called the Steam Deck Mount External Drive script. You can download this. I've uh, put a link to his um, GitHub and also a link to his video that I saw just recently. 
this is a, a nice little script that will you can run it and it will automatically mount your drive in desktop mode so it saves you having to go in and manually mount your drives but I don't know what's changed but it actually works in game mode as well now I'm running Steam Deck OS 3.5 so I don't know if it's got something to do with that don't know what exactly has changed. I've run that script. I'm running this later version of SteamOS. When I plug my SSD into the USB-C in the top of my Steam Deck, it mounts within a few seconds, and boom, I can see all my games. And I can run them. Look at this. Here we are. Fire up. ARK Survival, as that example I mentioned earlier. 124 gig. It is not on my Steam Deck. It is running from the SSD. And I can unplug this and plug it into my desktop PC and then run it just as easily from there. Thank you for watching this far. If you want to stick around, I've got a couple of quick channel updates. Firstly, a massive thank you to all of those who've watched this far, and all of you who've watched the channel before, and particularly for those of you that follow the channel. I have a request. It's not much of an ask. I just want some feedback on what you'd like to see. I think there's room for me to switch to these long-form videos. I quite enjoy these scripted videos as well. I probably will do maybe one every week to fortnight maximum. I've had a lot of fun doing the AYN reaction videos and I may extend that to do another AYN and INEO content. Now I, I stuck with the AYN because I have one on reserve. I also like the simplicity of the silent gameplay videos. So they're quite popular where someone just plays through a scenario on game and I'm just thinking about doing that directly on the Steam Deck. I'm not going to plug it in and capture it separately. I'm actually going to record me playing on the Steam Deck so you can see the full experience. But what do you think? Why not have your say in the comments section below? And lastly, when would you like to see these videos go live? Now I tend to drop somewhat sporadically, but the analytics on YouTube are suggesting Sunday is the best day for people to watch my videos. Although the analytics is also quite quick to highlight when I've not posted the video for two or three days, saying the reason my views are down is because I'm not posting enough content. So today's video is going to go live on a Sunday. And during the week, I might drop some more simple videos, gameplay, reactions, as they occur. Now, if I don't have a major topic for release on a Sunday, I may do a week in review video if people are interested in that. And that'll be a week in review of handheld gaming, things that have happened in the handheld stream, or games, perhaps, that are good on handhelds. Now, finally, thanks for sticking around to the very end of the video. I've got a few game codes from the recent Turkey Syria Earthquake Appeal Humble Bundle, and I'm going to drop a code somewhere into a video now and then. Now maybe I dropped one today. If I did, did you see it? Congrats if you did and you're the first person to grab it. Why not leave a comment in the comment section below if you managed to get that code. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.